Hi everyone, I'm Tom, lead designer at Antler Studios. We are a small indie dev team currently working on our first major title, Project Grove. Today we're going to be talking through what we've been doing for the past few weeks, as well as a full breakdown of how we make our foliage. So diving into it, the first thing we've been doing is greyboxing. Well hey, new levels, exciting. These levels focus on the new potions which Harry's been working on, and all this new content's been really motivating for us to see. We'll have more videos on the potions specifically in the future, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. Notably asset-wise, the new flora has been made and finished. Jinx has done some amazing work on this, and it was rigged and animated by me to give it a bit of life and flair in the level. Jinx is now moving on to the next one, the water flora, and we'll hopefully be able to show you some concepts and some work of this very soon. So with that very quick update over, let's get on to the main topic for this video, foliage. A quick overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to start off with the texture creation process, move on to the mesh using Maya. Then we're gonna go on back into Unreal and we're gonna see how we make a material. The material is gonna be very heavily based on the one we use for Project Grove with a few tweaks for sort of generic use. And lastly, we're talking about the foliage type, making sure you get the settings in that all correct. One of the main themes I wanna make sure you think about and, uh, and consider when you come to make your own foliage is that planning is key. Make sure that when you start a new asset or start a new project that you are thinking carefully about the sequence of events that need to happen and how all these different parts are going to come together in the end. It'll mean that you'll have a lot less iteration and a lot less problem down the line. In this example, we'll be using Unreal 4.23. Um, there are newer versions out and this is only a test project, but it's the same version as we're using for Project Grove at the moment. So it seems the best thing to do. Moving on to the actual texture making process. At Antler Studios, for foliage, we work in grayscale maps. This gives us the most choice of control inside of Unreal when it comes to colouring and setting up environments. To do this, we need to think about RGBA maps, not as one texture that is an image, but actually as four grayscale maps. This means we can really reduce our memory and really make use of all those pixels. A quick disclaimer. I personally am not an artist. I have helped out with the art and know a lot about the art process, but don't expect some incredible fidelity piece of work out of this. I'm doing this to teach you the principles and show you how we go about creating our foliage. When you're approaching this process, make something which suits your style and your game. Something like grass can really easily be overseen as something that fits all styles, you know, to have any grass and it'll work. But style is something that you need to come up with and something you need to keep and cohere to. Today, we'll be making something really simple, um, but it'll show you the process. This can be taken onto pretty much anything, both, you know, more complicated grass, as well as bushes, tree leaves, flowers, vines, really anything that uses this plain style foliage. As I said earlier, planning out your maps is really important. Think about what you'll need and what you'll be wanting to achieve with this material. For example, you might want a base color, uh, ambient occlusion, and ed hi edge highlights. Or you might want a couple color variants and an opacity. Or you might want a roughness map and an emissive map. Think about what textures you'll need when making this process. For this example, we'll be doing a base color variation, a depth color variation, a wind effect gradient, and then an opacity on our alpha channel. So here we are with my wonderful grass texture. Um, now you can see why I'm not the artist, because this is some weird flame looking thing, but it will do to show the process. We have over here a bunch of layers that I made, um, and we'll be using a combination of these to create our maps. As I said before, we're going to have a base colour variant 1, we're then going to have another colour variation, which is sort of a depth ambient occlusion one, which is the one you can see right now, that's what this one is. We'll then have another one, which is this one which will give us our wind so that there's less wind effect at the bottom and more wind at the top. This is so the grass isn't dancing around down at its base. And then lastly, we'll have a opacity, which will just let us have a mask to mask out the opacity. So the first thing we're gonna to want to do is file new. I'm doing just a 1K texture because this is a single small mesh. It doesn't need much space. Make sure you have RGB color on. This will give us the channels we can put stuff into. I've got my plan up with my R, G and B and alpha channels. So if we go over to our channels, we can see them right here. This is where we're going to be putting stuff into our R, G and B. And you can select them one by one at the moment. It's all just white. We are going to need one extra map. So this is our alpha and it's all black. So over on our layers, we'll go to RGB, we'll just select our background and just make it black. Back over in our main one, we're going to be copying over these maps into those channels. First off, this is already one set up, so we need to merge everything down into one. So right now this is our depth map on the windows. Control Shift Alt E will give us a layer with all that merged. Drag that up to the top and we'll call this one depth. And we'll go through and do this for all the different maps we need. So 
So now we have our four textures right here. For each of these, we're going to control A to select everything in this layer, control C to copy it, move over to this new Photoshop file we have, go to our channels. This is our wind, so this needs to go into our blue. So select the blue and paste. Over on the RGB, you'll see that this looks blue. That is because this is only on the blue layer, so it makes sense that the, the grayscale map in the blue channel makes the whole thing look blue. We're just going to copy this process for the other three maps. We finished that process. We've got all those maps into those channels. We can now see we have these four channels, each with their own grayscale map, ready for us to use. And together they look like this beautiful mess of colors. Wonderful. This is exactly what we want. All we need to do now is file save as and save this out into a target file. We now have our texture inside of Unreal. Importing it, you just need to drag it into your content browser and it'll be there for you. We can see that we have all of these different channels now that give us our different maps. Now we're over in Maya, all we're gonna do is make a very simple plane mesh that will show a single plane of grass, which will then duplicate a few times to make our final mesh. So first up, I'm gonna make that quick plane. Now we have that very, very basic plane, we're going to quickly put our texture on it so we can start shaping it and removing any areas of complete translucency. To display the texture on it, just head over to the Hypershade. On your material, press this little button here and choose a file. Now I exported out a PNG of the depth file, just because I think that will show off that the best. So here on depth, just press the file you want and open it up. Close out your Hypershade and make sure you press this little checkered circle here and that will display the texture. You'll see that the texture isn't being displayed correctly here. We'll need to unwrap this so it can display correctly. Go over to the UV editor and do this by just right clicking, going to UV shell, and you can now manipulate this to change what the texture sees. Firstly, I'm going to make sure it's the right way up. I'm just gonna scale it out until we can see the whole texture. I've noticed that that's not quite straight. I'm gonna straighten it out. And that's great. You want to have as little opacity as possible. Try and make sure you are very conservative with your empty space. Something like that should work perfectly. Now we can see our text being displayed on here. The next step is to make sure that the mesh can move with the wind. To do this, we'll need to give it some subdivisions as the vertices need to be moved. If these are the only vertices here, that won't be working very well. So I'll quickly do that. Now we've done that very quickly, we can see that there are some polygons here that are completely empty of texture information. Those two can just be deleted. The last thing we'll want to do is to further eliminate these blank spaces is move some vertices so that they're, they're close in and they cut off some of that space. I'm going to deselect soft select to do this. To fix this now, I'm going to need to go up to UV planar and that will quickly re-unwrap it and fix up all those deforms but now we need to go back to the UV editor and rotate it back around so that it's all lining up nicely. Now you can see we've eliminated as much as we can in terms of opacity and translucent areas so we can now close down our UV editor. The last thing to do is to give this a bit of shape and duplicate it a few times in order to make our final mesh. So I'm going to do that quickly. And there we have it, some very simple basic grass. Now let's just export this out into an FBX. We'll head over to Unreal and import it. Just drag it in to import the mesh. The settings you need to be aware of is if you click this drop down on mesh, you need to make sure you tick combine meshes, scroll down, do not create materials, and do not import textures. Foliage meshes generally use a material instance, so they don't need new materials and new textures coming in. And that really is everything you need to know about the mesh creation system. Later on, once we've got the texture on there and some of it out in the world, we'll look at some loading and some optimization. But for the moment, let's move on to the material. So now the material. This is the real key part when it comes to making good looking foliage. Um, this accompanied with lighting setup is the two things that will really make your foliage work or not work. 
The first thing you'll notice is our texture file over here. We are not using the RGB at all. We are only using those grayscale maps that we created earlier. We're using all four of them. So the base color is the, well, the base of the, of the material. We have a lerp which just moves between a value of zero and one using the alpha of our red channel, which is that grayscale map. And that changes the color from bottom to top. We then lerp again with a, with a darkness area. This is the fake ambient occlusion map on our green that we made. The blue one is slightly more complicated. This is how we control how much the wind moves. I'll go on to these wind functions in a little bit, um, but this blue map is what uses on the world position offset lerp, and that basically just changes the fact that the tips of the grass should move quite a bit, and the bottom shouldn't move at all, as it's, you know, attached to the ground. And lastly, that alpha, that just goes into the opacity mask. In terms of material settings, the only things you really need to know about over here is that we have it set to masked, two-sided foliage, and tick two-sided. If you're using two-sided foliage and two-sided, you need to make sure you have a two-sided sign and this blue setup with a multiply going into your normal. Or if you have a normal map, you can just plug that in. This will mean that you don't have weird black shadows on the back of your foliage everywhere, um, and it'll just give it that more refined look. Because we're using two-sided foliage, we also have subsurface. This just changes how it looks when there's light shining through it from behind, which is, you know, a natural state of grass. You could have a map to control that, using opacity. The opacity determines how much that light passes through. Our subsurface color is generally just pretty simple and it just gives it a bit of realism in the world. The last node I want to draw your attention to is this color variation node. Speed tree color variation. It's a standard Unreal node and it's really useful for giving that punch of realism to your environments even if they're stylized. What this does is just shift the hue of your base color very slightly by variation 0.02. If you turn this up you get a very weird looking grass but that might be what you want. Play with that value and you'll see the effects. What this does is each instance of this mesh out in the world will be a very slightly different color which will bring that realism out in your environment. The last key thing material wise is our two material functions which drive the specular and the world position offset. This is what really gives it that movement and dynamic feel, um, so let's break those down. First, our macro wind. This is that big variation where the whole leaf moves around. This is a very simple node using a lerp, a simple noise creation with some values being plugged in and absolute world position time. It just moves around. This means that everything in the world will be unified. So this is not texture based, this is world position based. And that means that it will look like the wind flowing over the fields. We also plug it into the specular. This is so that we can get some variation and it really looks like the, the grass is pointing towards you. And it looks like that highlight is bouncing off. So that's why we plug it into the specular as well as the off world position offset. The micro wind is even more simple. It's just a simple grass wind um, with some values that we can tweak. The speed value isn't variable, isn't, a, uh, isn't an editable variable because we want that to be consistent across everything. Meaning that all the grass, all the trees, each blow with the same sort of wind variable. In the future, we might want to have this as a, a variable which changes, uh, sort of lerps over time, so you get some sort of gusting feeling and effect. But for the moment, it's just a static 0.5. Both of these plug in very simply, um, going through a few clamps and multipliers just to give us some variation, going into our world position and specular. And that really is the material. It might look quite complicated, but it's really not. The core part of this is making sure we have those grayscale maps on point. That's how we really create this dynamic foliage. Let's quickly apply our material instance to our mesh. Now we can see our mesh here, and it's looking great. It's looking beautiful. We could probably tweak some of the values, but for the moment, let's just get into the foliage tool and set up our foliage type. So you want to go over to modes, foliage, and just drag and drop that mesh in. Let's go through some settings on this. Firstly, density. This changes how many can spawn at one time. With some things like trees, you don't really need to use this because I generally use single instance, which just puts one out at a time. But that's not what we want to do with grass. That would take forever. So let's adjust this to 200. Uh, and let's change our density up to 500. This should give us some nice dense grass, but not so dense that it's unusable. Now the color doesn't look quite right here, so we'll edit our material instance in a minute. We want to have a little bit of scale variation so we get some different sizes. So very, very minimal, something from 0 0.9 to 1.2. Our Z offset, minimum from minus one to zero. And this should give us a little bit of variation and a little bit of shape. We can even push this a little bit further, like so. Align to normal is sort of a design choice. So if there's a curved object, it'll follow that curve. For this instance, we'll leave it on because we're just doing it on a flat plane. 
two really important settings is cast shadow and cold distance. This will really choose whether it's optimized or not. I generally have cast shadow off, but this instance I'll leave it on because we're doing quite a small scene. Cold distance, something around 4000 to 7000 with a little bit of range will mean that that will get culled out and disappear. This really helps with optimization because you don't want to be drawing this grass the whole time when you're really really far away because you won't be able to see it anyway so we'll leave that like that. So let's just chuck a bit of this grass out. Now this is a solid basis however I think this can be refined slightly using our color variants. So all I did there was edit a few of those color variations. Now let's look at this variation amount and we'll show you what this does. If I turn this up to one we now have rainbow colors which is not very pretty if we turn it down to zero they're all exactly the same something like a 0 0.05 or 0.03 gives you that little bit of variation you see some yellows and some greens coming out and um, that will really help push that effect i'm going to tweak this further and get it looking great there we go there's some standard looking grass made in the project grove process of course you all out there and your brilliant artists will be able to make something that looks much better than this but this is a good start and basis hopefully for you to think about foliage and texture files in a slightly different way. The last thing we're going to talk about with this mesh is LODs. Firstly, we're going to untick auto compute LOD distances and turn up our number of LODs to three. We're going to apply those changes and tick custom here. This will let us really decide on each of these LODs what's going to happen. Up here on the top left in this little bit, you can see the current LOD being displayed is two because right now screen size needs to be one to show LOD zero and 0.98 for LOD two. So what we're gonna do is edit these sizes a little bit. So 0.3 for zero, 0.1 for one, and 0.05 for two. What this means is as that grass gets smaller, you'll see that number going up. Now these numbers might need to be tweaked because right now that's quite far away. So let's save that out, go over to our level and see this in action. Now you can't see that popping in and out, but what we can do is go up to Leather Detail Colorization and Mesh LODs. Now we can see really clearly that Mesh LOD being culled out and shown. This will really help with your optimization and is a really key step when it comes to optimizing something like grass. And that brings us to the end of talking about our foliage process. As I said before, I'm not an artist, but hopefully this gives you a clear idea of how at Antler Studios we go about making foliage. Thinking about texture files as four grayscale maps will help you go at this problem in a new way. Hopefully this has enlightened you a little bit on how we like to do things. If you have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask, and mainly just go out there and make some beautiful foliage and make sure you share it with us on our Discord. And that is everything I want to talk about in this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this has been somewhat helpful. And for those of you who want to know how we do our foliage, hopefully this has put some light on that. If you want to see more from us, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash that like button. Uh, that's the classic YouTuber thing to say. So yeah, if you want more direct contact with us, go to our Discord or Twitter. The links will be below. If you want to play Project Grove, the game that this is all based on, go over to Steam. The link will also be in the description below. Have a lovely rest of your day. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.